Hey, it's Don, the Auction Professor here. Today, we're going to talk about the new payment process and the cost differences. Now, eBay actually has a sheet where you can compare it. There's not much really to compare. It's really not even worth putting in the numbers into the sheet. It's such a small difference. Let's go look at it right now, and we'll discuss the differences between the fees we paid with PayPal and the fees we'll pay with eBay payment processes. So we'll hop over there right now. So here we are. This is the eBay payment processing fee comparison calculator. Big long term. It doesn't really mean a whole lot. The actual new payment processing fee is going to be 2.7% of whatever they collect. There's also a 25 cent. Now this is the kicker here. I don't think they went into much detail before. This is actually going to be per item. You would have paid that anyway if they were sold individually. So it's not a huge factor, but it is going to raise your costs over the old payment process. Now here, the old payment process is 2.9%. This is PayPal. This is what we pay in one of our stores, the one we share with you. It's 0.330 cents per actual transaction. So if someone bought 100 cards, it's still only 30 cents. So that's the difference here. So if you're like us and you're doing maybe... 30% of your sales at least are multiple purchases. It could add up to some money. I'm going to show you how to negate that here in just a few moments and an easy way to fix and remedy that. Now, I've actually figured out, and we've put in $1,000 here, and I've calculated it out. The difference in a $1,000 payment that you would get is only $2. Now, it's 7%. Now, that's 7% of the fees. That's not 7% difference in... Uh, the thousand dollar direct purchase so and I can put it in here and we'll just do a hundred dollars here for an example so you can see it's really not that much if it's a hundred dollar purchase you're gonna save a quarter that's all you are going to save I know it adds up through the year let's say you're doing five thousand dollars and just processing fees a year which isn't really that much in all honesty um, at 2.7 percent it's only gonna be 350 bucks difference that you would save, which really isn't much difference at all um, from the whole scheme of this. But again, they're gonna collect 25 cents more if you're doing multiple item purchases. So that may change if there's a big stink about it. Now, this isn't what everybody expected. Everybody expected that it was gonna be 25 cents versus the 30 cents per transaction, which is what I expected. So this is a kick in the butt. It's another nickel and dime us to death here. Again, we're spreading out. I own all my listings these days. So if something happens with eBay, I can go other places with it. So I'm not putting all my eggs in one basket. Five or 10 years ago before eBay started this advance with charging us for everything, I would have been more prone just to stick on eBay, but you're just not wise to do that anymore. Who knows who could take over and what else they could be doing to us. So I'll show you real quick how to avoid being hit by that fee. There's not much to it. Now, we have a policy set up, a business policy set up for most everything, and this is actually my business policies here. Now, I have a standard return policy for every single listing. I have a payment policy as well, and then I have multiple actual uh, policies for shipping. It just depends on what's being shipped. Some items can only ship certain ways. I've got media, you know, I've got other aspects involved with my business policies. Uh, and this works for me. All of these pretty much break down everything that I sell into appropriate means so I don't have to send stuff overseas that I don't want to. Some policies in here state that if they buy it from overseas, there's no free returns, but there's free returns in the U.S. So you can do all of that with just a few buttons. So if you've got a return policy, you can have one return policy and change every single listing. This is honestly the best bet for doing anything on eBay. If you're just starting off, set yourself up some policies. You can do everything you want in the policies. To fix that quarter, all I'm going to do is go into here, into the one that's going to use it. Most everything that I do that's combined is first class, 99% of it. I know that there's small items like postcards or trade cards or baseball cards. Magazines even can fall into that, which I will probably change as well too. All you got to do is go in here, click the edit button, which I've actually opened it up into a new window. Again, this is my personal settings. This is my first class item, 16 ounces or less. Anything 16 ounces or less is the description on this. This is also my default category. So whenever I'm doing a listing, this automatically is in there. And if I don't want to use this, I'll have to change it. Only because the majority of my items we list in this one tie to this. 
we've got many other accounts, so some accounts have different things on them. So, you know, if I've got massive quantities of one thing, it may not necessarily be in this store. You got to think about, you know, the broader picture here, and we sell in many different platforms too. This is the best bet. Most platforms we use do this type of thing. Amazon has policies basically where you can click and move these around to tie into any listing you want the exact same basic way. Obviously, it's not the exact way to do it, but it's the same basic principle without a doubt. Okay, now there's two ways you can actually negate the fee. Some people may want to do it this way. All you got to do is add a quarter into the handling cost. So every time someone purchases something, it's going to add a quarter in. Now, I do calculated shipping for everything. So this will not work if you are not doing calculated shipping. Again, calculated shipping is the way to go. That's what we do for pretty much every single thing that I have up right now. So I could just add a quarter into the handling costs. Now, the other option is apply my calculated shipping rule. So here's the combined payments and shipping discount section. So on this page, I use two different options on here. I use calculated shipping rule. We're going to actually show you that real quick. Now, I do not combine the weights on the items that I add this to. These are all first class items, mostly paper items. The weights wouldn't mean anything because I can ship 20 cards, 30 cards for the same amount of weight, even more than that in most cases, 50 cards even. So the weight's not a huge ordeal on there. So what I want to do, though, is click on next here. Do not combine the weights. Now, you could have items that you want to combine the weights. It'll combine all weights. You can have one that'll subtract. I just do do not combine weights. From there, I used to add a $0.10 cents handling cost for each additional item. I'm just going to up that to $0.25. Cents. It's going to fully cover my cost on everything. So this is my calculated shipping rule for combined shipping. That is all there is to it. I save it. That section is done. We're going to go here, and I'm just going to show you the combined payments option as well. By clicking in here, you can edit your combined payments and allow buyers to send one combined payment for all items purchased. Now, I do 30 days again because I let people buy stuff throughout the month and they can actually pay at the end of the month. Now, not everybody I allow to do that, but people have been dealing with me for years and I have quite a few that come back and have been buying for me for four, five, six, even seven years in many cases. So I do 30 days. I allow them to send one payment. So again, this is something that's key. If you don't have this set up, I would honestly recommend getting into this and doing it as well. That is all there is to both of those options. And so from here, I'm just going to apply my calculated shipping rule. This is the discount. So basically, if somebody buys more than one item, it's going to add a quarter on for each additional item. That's all I got to do. So when eBay hits me with the quarter, that's all I have to do and worry about it. Now, I could add uh, shipping handling cost as well, as I said, and just put a quarter in there. But that's going to charge the first item a quarter. I don't mind as much uh, not charging it this way because I don't give out the discount for shipping. So it's pretty much a break even for me right now. So if it's a quarter now, I'm actually going to save five more cents. So the quick fix is just add an extra quarter for each item over the first initial item they purchase, and then it washes out all the extra fees. It's just that simple. I know it is an extra charge for your buyers. In this case, I'm just going to add a little disclaimer into my listings that state that or into a payment notice that I sent out in my invoice that says there is a 25 cent extra handling fee for any items over the first one due to eBay's new payment processing policy. And that is the end of it from my point of view. They can look it up and they can see that eBay is now doing that. So that is all there is to this. Well, there you go. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Hopefully that gave you some insight into this. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell a friend.